Packing can be stressful, but it doesn't have to be. I hate packing, but usually it comes down to the fact that I don't plan ahead and I'm doing it at the last minute. Hey, travel lovers, I'm Jessica, and today you are packing with me. You're helping me out because I need to go through all of this and make sure that I am set for my next trip. And so I figured it'd be a perfect time to share my best travel tips for packing a carry-on for when you're traveling to Europe. So let's get into it. So basically this video is gonna be in four different sections. This is the pre-packing section, then we'll get into packing, and then the personal item, and then extra security stuff. So you don't wanna miss any of it for sure. The number one thing to figure out is which bag is right for you. Do you need a rolly bag or do you need a backpack? Because Europe is old. There are lots of cobblestone streets and places with no elevators that you will actually have to carry your bag up. So are you somebody who needs to have that on their back or needs to have a rolly bag? Hmm? Now I've just converted to this four wheel bag. I've had a two wheel bag for ages and I'm very excited about this. So this is from level eight, it's their 20 inch. And I will leave all the dimensions up here for you so you can determine if it's the right size for you and fits your needs. Uh, but I travel mostly carry-on only, and I love this color. I'm obsessed with this color, actually. So they did give me this bag, but we've been using their 24-inch checked bag. Sean prefers to check a bag. He travels a lot for work, so he has a lot more stuff to deal with, and I love the wheels. I love the handle. Everything has been so great. So very excited to try this, and uh, yeah, let's just jump right in, shall we? So I, 95% of the time, uh, use a rolling bag. I do have a backpack in case I need it for one of those stingy airlines, but typically I have a rolling bag. Once you choose your bag, you need to make sure that it fits within your airline restrictions. So does this bag meet carry-on requirement size? Does this have to be checked? Are you allowed an eight kilogram personal item only? Like double check all of those things because it varies so much, I think especially in Europe, that you don't wanna get caught off guard. And definitely check your weight limits as well. Um, a luggage scale is really handy for this. I have one and my battery's dead, so I should probably fix that. But you can always use the trusty stand on the regular scale and then pick up your bag and then see what the weight is. I'm flying KLM and because I have status, I don't really have to worry about my bag being taken away or them checking anything, but I always like to make sure I'm within the restrictions. If you wanna see me just pack a one bag, so just this and not a personal item, let me know. Or if you just wanna see me pack a personal item, let me know because I'm actually thinking about doing a solo trip around that idea. Hmm. Where should I go if I do a little solo trip with just a personal item? Let me know in the comments what you think because uh, I've been seriously thinking about it. So yeah, let me know. So the key to keeping your suitcase light, packing more minimal, is really to pack less, right? Obviously. But how do you do that? So even if you're traveling for two or three weeks, really only pack for five to seven days. Yeah, you might have to do laundry. That might be at a laundromat or you can do laundry in your hotel room. I travel with Dr. Bronner soap and I wash in the sink or in the shower and then I honestly just hang stuff up wherever I can, except for wood. I don't like to do that because I don't like the moisture in the wood. Um, hangers are really great, obviously, for something like that. You can also use those um, laundry detergent sheets. I'm gonna start traveling with those because we just got some, so I'm gonna try that out. Um, but yeah, you can wash your stuff. The exception of this is underwear. I always have more underwear and socks than I need just in case you know, you're know you out and then um, you wanna shower and you're changing and you weren't expecting to change. Nobody wants to put on dirty underwear after that. So always pack extra underwear, basically. <laughs> I'm gonna put as much as I can in my Amazon storefront for you so that if there's something that you see me packing with, um, you can check there to see if they have it, like the Donner, Dr. Bronner soap or the laundry sheets, stuff like that. So I'll leave that link down below for you, but also let me know if you have any questions about anything else. Next step is to create a packing list. This seems obvious, right? But so many people are like, ah, I know what I need. But the thing is, is you need to start with uh, your basic list. And what I mean by that is, what do you always use? You're always gonna want socks and underwear and toothpaste and toothbrush. Write all of it down and use that as your base and then tailor it to the kind of trip that you're going on. 
A snorkeling trip is going to be different than a conference trip. Uh, summer in Madrid is going to be different than Norway in winter. You get what I mean? So start with the basics and then add to it. I do this on my phone because I'm somebody who will never remember at the very beginning. So I'm going to just keep adding to it as I go. And then pack a day earlier than you expect to. That way you have a day to remember exactly what you forgot. Is that just me? I always do that. <laughs> if you've been watching my channel for a while, I've talked about how one day I'm gonna talk about how I use packing cubes a little differently than everybody else. So I feel like a lot of people in this world either love or hate packing cubes. I can go either way, but I have started a system that works for me. So this is a larger, well, probably more of a medium packing cube, depending on how you pack. And there are two main kinds of packing cubes. There are regular packing cubes that just really help with organization so you can separate everything, or there's compression packing cubes. I'm a big fan of the compression for a couple reasons. A, you can use them just as regular packing cubes if you'd like, and B, you tend to get a little bit more space out of them. Now I tend to roll my clothes and just put pretty much everything in here. But this one, and the reason I like this one, I'm gonna show you a sample because my underwear is on the other side. <laughs> this one has a zipper on the other side for dirty or wet things. And it's just, it's the same wall as the other side. So basically as you lose space on the mesh side, you gain space over here. So basically you have the same amount of space. I love this so, so much. Now this brand is Travel Dude and I will link it down below, but I don't know if it's available um, in the US. I think I got this here, but I will try to find one that is similar that has the same features. So some people will separate different types of clothes. So they'll put their main clothes in here and then they will put their workout clothes or their socks and underwear in here or whatever. So there's that idea. Then one of my favorite people on the planet, Samantha Brown, has a tip where um, you basically take like a plastic bag or a packing cube, whatever you want, and you put in each day's worth of clothes. Now, if this is what works for you, absolutely do it. The key to this video is to give you ideas, to present things for you to see if it works for you. Nothing is gonna work for everybody. Our brains are different. If there's anything I've learned on my time on earth, it's our brains work differently. So if that's what helps you, go for it. For me, I put as much as I can in here. I will not put socks and underwear in there, and I'll tell you why in a bit. So. I take basically the biggest packing cube that will fit in here and I put it on the bottom, just like that. Pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> and if you're wondering about the clothes inside, I am only gonna be gone for four days. So I have two pairs of pants, I'm gonna wear one and then I have one packed. Then I have a couple shirts and I have my workout clothes. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what's in there. And then what you can do, because there is, in this bag specifically, you have the um, handle, you have the uh, rails inside of the bag. And that gives you a little extra space on the bottom. Like, yeah, okay, it's kind of annoying that it takes away space, but it's either that or it's gonna be on the outside and then it's not gonna fit in the sizers or they're gonna cover it up and then you lose the entire space. So it's fine. but. This is the best way for me because then it's just there. Then you just know all your clothes are right here, right? And then you have a little bit of space down and around it. And this is exactly why I don't add everything else to another packing cube. You can pop in some underwear down there. You can put your socks, you can put a bikini, you can put, uh, I don't know, um, anything that you can just shove down there. And actually I have some things that I'll probably shove down in there. Um, you might be wondering about wrinkles. So because I make YouTube videos and I take photos, I am a little bit weird and I will travel with a travel steamer. You can laugh at me. It's fine. You can judge me. It's fine. But if you're watching the videos and I don't have wrinkled clothes, this is why. I don't like irons. If you're yelling at the screen like, ah, just use the iron. I don't like irons. But there is another alternative. Where did I put it here? Um, you can also spray your clothes uh, with water. Sometimes that works. Put it in the bathroom. 
while you're showering, make sure you kind of tug on the fabric a little bit to help it out. Um, there's also this downy wrinkle releaser. I don't know that this works any better than regular like water, but uh, maybe it does, but it also has an odor eliminator that helps when you're traveling. So that's what I do about wrinkles. If you only use packing cubes, then you're really only having rectangular shapes. And there are plenty of things that you're gonna put in your bag that are not rectangular shapes, like a steamer. Okay, so <laughs> let's go to the other side real quick because I wanna talk about shoes. So when you are packing your suitcase, you want the heaviest things on the bottom, but you also wanna make sure you're wearing your heaviest things on the plane. That will help um, the space in your suitcase and that will help the weight of your suitcase. So in here are my workout shoes and I'm gonna put them on the bottom. Now they are light. They are so light. I couldn't believe how light they were, but generally most shoes are gonna be on the heavier side. So I typically put that on the bottom. Now putting it on the bottom helps with the weight distribution, especially if you have a two wheeled bag, put the weight just above the wheels. That'll help it from toppling over when it's just standing up. Yeah, I know. I've, I've, learned, I've learned my lessons. You're watching me because I've learned my lessons and I'm trying to make things easier for you. So shoes in the bottom and put whatever you can in the shoes, deodorant, um, uh, socks, whatever, put them in the shoes because then you're saving space, right? And then I put in my toiletry bag. Now this is a, a small one that came from Stockholm, uh, but whatever size you have, you're gonna start getting used to where it fits and what fits on it or around it, especially if you are just starting to travel a little bit more. So that's my toiletry kit. I have my liquids bag. Now I have a tip for you about the liquids bag. If you are traveling um, carry-on only and you are taking liquids with you, then you can also put this in your personal item at the beginning so that it's easy to get out for security and then you can add it to your bag later. Especially in this case, you wanna have it at the top of your bag, or if you wanna take it out from security from this bag because you don't have a personal bag, whatever. Um, keep it in the top. That is just makes it like a lot more handy to get in and out. And if you want a video about how to uh, maximize the amount of toiletries that you can get while not worrying so much about the liquids, uh, let me know because uh, I think that'd be a pretty Cool video. So some things I travel with, I mentioned my workout clothing. So I will bring um, a long resistance band. Yeah. You can do so much with this thing. I love it. And I can just go on the shoes, I'll probably go in the shoes. I have the shorter resistance bands. And with the workout stuff, it just reminds me like, you know, Workout clothes, you can't really multi-purpose them, right? But some clothes you can. You wanna make sure your clothes are mixed and matchable, uh, stick with neutrals and maybe one pop of color or something like that. Just make sure it all goes together because that will make your outfits go so much further. And if you're only packing for five to seven days, you really just don't need that many clothes unless you have some specific reason why you do, obviously. But just mix and match, have clothes that do more than one thing, a dress that turns into a skirt or uh, pants that turn into shorts or something like that. Like really, really think about how these things um, can be optimized. I love optimization. Now here I have a packable jacket. I can put this in here because I have room or wear it on the plane because you wear your bulkiest items. And if you wear your bulkiest items, like if you're wearing your hiking boots on the plane, just keep in mind at security, they may ask you to take your shoes off if your shoes are more bulky. Bulky? <laughs> um, but you can wear this on the plane and take it off. And then when you put your suitcase up at the top, wheels first, guys, wheels first. Wheels go in the back, wheels go in the back. That way your handle's right there for you to pull it out. It's easy peasy. And then this, you can just shove on top of your suitcase. Don't put it next to the suitcase. Yeah, we're getting into plane etiquette here, but put it on top of your suitcase. You can take your layers off when you get on the plane and just pop it on top of your suitcase, easy peasy. But I have room. I think I'm gonna put it over here, but because I have these, um, these rails right here, I'm gonna make sure to put stuff under it first. So I also travel with a first aid kit. So this has just the basic stuff to kind of get you through in case uh, you start feeling sick and you want something before you go to the pharmacy. Um, it's just a little flat pack and I have like powdered um, nighttime cough, multi-symptom, severe cold, uh, paracetamol, allergy pills, Dramamine, stuff like that. I pop that in here and I think 
yeah, that actually goes really nicely right under there. That's so cool. And you wouldn't even think about it, right? Like if you're just piling stuff on, like really be thoughtful about this stuff. Something else you might make fun of me for is I do bring my own tea. This is a stasher bag. If you've never used stasher bags, they are life. I, I have so many now. I love them. Um, I buy Yorkshire tea from when I go to London and um, then I travel with it. And I'm just really picky about my tea. And you know, we all have things that make us comfortable and traveling is essentially uncomfortable. So sometimes you just want something from home or for me, I don't drink coffee, I drink tea. So this is my go-to. So I'm gonna pop that right in between the rails. Easy. I have a laundry bag, which I love to travel with. I'm gonna put that, there's a little bit of room. And this is what I mean, like learn your suitcase. There's room down here. There's so much room because this isn't gonna fill every nook and cranny. So there is room down here. You know what I think is gonna fit there perfectly? My hair straightener. Let's see. There we go. Perfect. Love it. All right. Where do you, th whoop. Where do you think my uh, steamer should go? And don't say keep it at home. Smarty pantses. Smarty pantses. All right. I'm going to pop it over here on the foot of my shoe, on the toes of my shoe. Look, there's extra space. Put that there. You should always have a packable shopping bag. Although I think this is gonna go in a personal item. Um, and I do have room for this. And this is my packable rain jacket. <laughs> it didn't come with its own pouch guys. And now it's just living in a very old uh, plastic bag and it's ripped and everything, but it keeps it together. It packs very flat. Unfortunately, they don't make this rain jacket anymore. So I can't um, recommend it or link it to you. But if you can find a really good packable rain jacket I, and you travel a lot, I think it is worth um, the price to get it because rain can really kind of ruin the day depending on what you're doing. And it <laughs> just pops out. And uh, if you get one a little bit bigger, then you can wear something under it. So you can actually just use that as an outer layer and you can wear a sweater underneath or I can actually put it over my packable puffer jacket so there is that so I'm just gonna squish that in there for now I'll fix it later for frequent flyers I highly recommend that you get some go bag things so for me what is always ready to go is my liquids bag I will always replenish when I get home my toiletry bag and in my toiletry bag is my little makeup bag so I have travel makeup and home makeup and it's just like travel brushes and things like that um, it just makes it so much easier they stay in my bag so this might be different for you maybe you have um, a sleep set that you only wear when you're out maybe you have a travel pillowcase a lot of people do that um, for comfort of home maybe you have a pillow spray that you travel you, you get what I mean like um, there are certain things that you'll just always use when you're traveling. And so it's nice to just have them ready in your suitcase. Oh, one quick tip about uh, your liquids bag. So um, yes, rules are changing in some places. Like I said, if you want a video on liquids, let me know. But generally speaking, keep only liquids in your liquids bag. Uh, especially like if you're trying to fill it. <laughs> I say this because a lot of people will make their liquids bag their toiletry bag. And so they'll have their brush and comb and everything in there. And then they're like, I don't have enough room. Just keep liquids in here. Simple answer, but sometimes it's not always super obvious. You know what I mean? Because it's not always nice to have two separate uh, things to carry with you, right? So I get it, but keep liquids, only liquids in your liquids bag. And check it out, I have extra room here. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but I'm sure I will do something. The cool thing about, um, your carry-on bag is especially like if you can check it and you're just not checking it is that if you leave room you can come home with souvenirs and yes I usually do if you're new here hi by the way welcome <laughs> um, I really like to collect wine and gin and Christmas ornaments and art so it's always nice to have extra space, but you don't want too much extra space because then stuff is going to shift around. So I will probably repack this and make this a little bit um, nicer just so that stuff doesn't move around so much. Um, and that way I can come home with stuff because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna come home with stuff on this trip. Alrighty, let's talk about 
a personal item. I'm not gonna be packing that today because I have a couple more days left and I need all the stuff in my personal item. But let's talk about it because I have some tips that you're not gonna wanna forget, okay? Number one, most important thing is to always keep any essential medications on you at all times, period. Seriously, do not ever forget that. Like all the hand gestures, okay? Anything with lithium batteries, keep it on you. It's a safety precaution. Is it overly ambitious? Maybe, but like just follow the rules and then everybody's happy. I keep a mini first aid kit. Is this just too much? I feel like for some people this would just be too much, but I like having this with me. So this is like one of every pill. This is, uh, you know, one allergy pill, one Benadryl, which is a different allergy pill, uh, paracetamol, Pepto-Bismol, Aleve, things like that. So I keep this in my personal item. The shopping bag goes in the personal item. Um, for long haul flights, I have a whole video on how to make your long haul flight so much better. I will link that above here. But we take a carry on, a a grocery bag with us because we will fill our water bottle. That's something else you should have in your bag. Um, but we also fill this up with snacks and other drinks and stuff because it's a long haul flight. Also, in case the plane gets delayed and you're on the tarmac, you want to make sure you have um, drinks and snacks. Power. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I feel like most of us are going to use our device on the plane, your phone, your tablet, your laptop, whatever. And I always, I mean, always, travel with my Anchor 20,000 milliamp battery. And I love this, I love this so much. But my problem with it is that if I'm going out, I don't always want this brick, you know what I mean? So I've found, and this seems that maybe a little counterintuitive because like you're adding extra weight, but this charges my phone multiple times. But I just discovered this because I think it's new. <laughs> um, it's the Anchor, I think it's a nan, what does it say? Nano power bank. So it's 5,000 milliamps. So it should charge my phone up pretty good. Um, and it's the size, and I brought this. I'm obsessed with this. I just got this and I bought it. It's not sponsored, but um, it's about the size of two lipsticks. Like it's crazy, it's crazy. Um, so basically I put this in my purse now and I'm gonna travel with this and this. So yeah, overkill, but that's okay. Because I might wanna to switch to a purse like this, and this can go in your personal item or your carry-on, either way. Um, and if you can find one like this, I'll try to find one on Amazon for you. This is from TK Maxx, so there's no brand name on it. I have no idea like where it's from, but it has a little lock on it. And then you unzip it, and there are uh, loops in the back, and it comes with a purse strap, and a wristlet. And I love this because it can be all of the things and it can act as a little bit of a packing cube too. So you can pack other things in here. But this thing, I mean, it's literally smaller than a, a business card pouch. And it just goes right in there and it doesn't take up like any space. I'm just, I'm obsessed. <laughs> just because I feel like when you're out you just don't wanna carry so much stuff with you, especially if you're just going out to dinner or something and you don't wanna take a travel day bag. So I highly recommend that. Other thing, a passport cover um, slash like pouch for all your travel stuff. So I use PackSafe. They don't make this passport cover anymore, but they do make other things that I will recommend for you. I love PackSafe. I think it's a great brand. I've bought so many of their items and uh, my all, Anytime I have a personal item backpack, it's always pack safe. So that that's highly reliable. Also separate your cards and cash. So you should always keep this on you, but if you have a separate wallet, keep your cash separate. That way if you lose one, you will still have money and cards. So I don't typically travel with cash. A lot of Europe doesn't even use cash uh, regularly anymore. So I don't feel the need for it, but there are certain places that does. And obviously that makes you feel more comfortable to travel with cash do that. But I will always keep a card in here and then a card in my wallet or in my phone. If you'd like, because everybody's obsessed with this. Um, this is my phone case, Spigen. I've had a Spigen case on every phone, like in my last five phones, and I don't buy phones very often. And it 
it holds two cards in there. So my transit card, my office key are in there right now, but when I'm traveling, you could also keep a debit card. And for a lot of people, your phone can act as a card as well for contactless. So just a couple tips separate it so you always have one. Um, I also really recommend Wise, the, the, I don't even know what it's called. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's called, but I use that card for non-Euro um, payments because you can transfer money back and forth and it's, a, it's, it's just really, really handy and it saved me in Portugal actually, which does take the Euro, but for whatever reason, their machines would not take my other card, which is kind of weird. Um, but yeah, separate your card, have another card. Always have another card. If you are able to have a credit card and you only really wanna use your debit card, still have the credit card, for emergencies. Travel adapters, if you're coming to Europe and you're from the US, travel adapters and converters are a must. I would also suggest um, getting like a plug for that has multiple USB charging ports. I use Anchor, not shocking, I use Anchor everything. Um, but I use that because it has like four different ports on it. And a lot of things these days you can charge via USB. So I use that, that'll be in my Amazon shop link that I'll leave down below for you. But it's just really nice because it's so small and you can charge a lot. For comfort, an eye mask and a neck pillow if you are going on a long haul flight. Again, check out my long haul flight video for more of that. Also, I talk about this comfort kit and I'll show you what's in it because long haul flights like the ones to Singapore and Hong Kong, the 12, 13 hour ones, you wanna have a comfort kit, definitely. Stay hydrated and eat. We've talked about having you know your grocery bag full of drinks and snacks. Always carry your own water bottle, always, always. If you're going somewhere where you're not sure if you can actually drink the water, so like refilling it doesn't make sense, um, we use the Grail. I'll leave that in the Amazon shop for you as well. We use the Grail bottle. It is expensive. I wanna say it's like $90 or something like that. Um, but then you're not buying water constantly. You're not contributing to plastic waste or all of that. So I think it's worth it. We don't travel with that in Europe, but we do travel um, if we go anywhere that we're a little iffy on it. Like when we went to Bali, we used that and it worked. Also for hydration, um, Sean swears by Uppy. So there are different hydration tabs. This is the ones that we use and uh, it's great for long haul flights. It's also helpful for um, jet lag and he uses it after baseball. For entertainment, don't forget to download your songs and movies and shows onto your phone or tablet or laptop if that's what you're doing. And if you wanna use the in-flight entertainment, don't forget to have wired headphones or the adapter for your Bluetooth headphones. I prefer the wired ones because it just, yeah, I think it works better. Um, but yeah, for your entertainment, do that. And I'm kind of obsessed newly with this kind of thing. Now, um, there's a different brand in the US than the one I can get here, but this one is Flexi Flap. Uh, but I will link the one for the US in the Amazon store because it's an Amazon, it's for US. Um, but basically it folds in different directions and you can pop it in uh, the seat tray or you can just make a little, uh, a little holder on your, uh, on your tray table like this. I'm obsessed with this. I actually use it at the hotel room too. Um, and I have a little Bluetooth keyboard. So if I don't want to bring my computer, I can use my phone and that. So super handy. And I am obsessed with this, so I just wanna share it. I use an e-writer, so a lot of people have Kindles, and Sean, a couple years ago for my birthday, got me a uh, super note, and I love it. So it's a digital notebook, so you actually just write in it, and it's like paper kind of a thing, and you can also put your Kindle on it. You can also put your calendar and your email and stuff like that. I don't do that because I don't want it on that. That's just my notes and, and uh, my Kindle, <laughs> but it's really nice because you can do both. So if you're looking for something like that, I'll link that down below. And um, yeah, hope you like it as much as I do. Sean's actually gonna get one for himself. Let's talk about safety. So you should always have digital copies and or physical copies of your passport, your identification, um, and keep those separate. So if you wanna keep one in your suitcase, one on you, uh, one in the safe, one, you know, like keep them separate. I do have digital copies of things as well. So I will keep those in a certain spot. Um, but that's just, just in case, you just never know. It's all about insurance. And speaking of insurance, travel insurance. Now, depending on where you're going, if you're, in Europe, if you live in Europe and you're going throughout Europe, uh, you may not need uh, like travel health insurance because of the 
EU health insurance thingy, but uh, travel insurance is a different thing. And um, so you might wanna think about that. That can be through your bank. That can be through somewhere like World Nomads, something like that. I only tend to get travel insurance uh, if I'm going to the US, but because that, or Asia. So if I'm going out of Europe, I get that because I just don't like the systems in the US. I feel like health wise, like it's a lot more expensive. And in Asia, I just don't really understand the systems there. So that's how I do it. Um, but as far as traveling, lost luggage, cancel flights, blah, blah, blah. Um, regular insurance is also very, very important. Like I think I can get it through my bank. Um, so check on that. If you enjoyed this video, if this was helpful in any way, please like and let me know if you picked up any tips that I gave you. And subscribe if you haven't already, if you wanna join our Patreon, go ahead and do that. We'd love to have you as part of the community. And we do live streams there and they get a few extra videos that are kind of like raw updates and things like that. So if you're into that, I'd love to see you over there. I'd love to chat with you in DMs. And until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. See you next time, bye.